skeletal sternum. As we will discuss the axial skeleton. In the axial skeleton, the first one is the skull. Finish. Skull, cranial bones, facial bones. Okay, see here. The facial bones, cranial bones, that is one. After that, vertebral cord. First one is the skull, finish. Next, vertebral cord, finish. Third one is sternum. Sternum. See here, sternum. It is the third part of the axial skeleton. It is a flat bone. The sternum, it is a flat bone. It is a flat bone present the mid ventral part of the bone. It is a flat bone, flat bone. It is a flat mid ventral part of the bone. So here, from here onwards it starts. It is, it is a flat bone. It is located mid, middle, ventral part of the body. And it consists of three parts. It consists of three parts. They are anterior or superior. Menubrium. Middle. Body. Body. Posterior. Z point. Z point process. Z point process. Okay, so this is. See everybody. See. This part, it is, it is flat mid ventral portion. It consists of three parts. Okay, so the anterior, the anterior menubrium. This is called menubrium. So the diagram you see, the menubrium. The diagram you see. This is menubrium. This is, okay, so this is, this part is called the sternum, it is located here, central part, so this is, this is called the sternum, it has three parts, so anterior menubrium, menubrium, middle body, posterior sepoid, sepoid process, sepoid process. So, to this part, to this, ribs and abdominal muscles are attached. Ribs, okay, to this sternum, these are called ribs, ribs, side ribs, ribs. Here, abdominal muscles are attached. So, in between these ribs are so muscles, those are so attached to this. To this, side ribs and abdominal muscles are attached strong. That is called sternum. Okay, it is a flat mid ventral portion of the body. It is divided into three partitions: menubrium, body, and its zygoid process. To these side ribs and abdominal muscles are attached strongly. That is the explanation about sternum. Next one: ribs, fourth one. Ribs. Ribs. So, there are 12 pairs of ribs are present in human chest. 12 pairs of ribs. 12 pairs of ribs. 12 pairs. 12 pairs of ribs are present in human chest. See, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, 
सेवेंथ एट नाइन्थ टेंथ इलेवेंथ Twelve pairs of ribs are ribs are present in human chest. Okay, that's it. Next, first seven pairs. First, first two seventh pair. First seven pairs of ribs are called true ribs. First seven pairs of ribs are called true ribs, which are attached to the sternum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Up to this, these are called true ribs. So these ribs are attached to the sternum. True. True. Cartilage. This cartilage is called. Hyaline cartilage tissue. Hyaline cartilage tissue. See in our body. These ribs directly don't attach to the sternum. Up to here, this joint also is there. So this is joint. Up to here, ribs. From here onwards, the cartilage tissue that is called hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage. So this is attached to the sternum through hyaline cartilage. So that's why this first pair, first seven pairs of ribs are called true ribs. Okay. So these ribs, these ribs, ventrally attached to the sternum through hyaline cartilage. Dorsally, these ribs dorsally, dorsally means back side, attached to the vertebral column. See, so this is vertebral column. As today I said, twenty-six sequentially arranged. Twenty-six sequentially arranged. Small units called vertebrae. I said, na. So back side. So this is called dorsal side. Dorsal side. These ribs are attached to the vertebral column. Ventral side. These ribs are attached to the stem. Okay, so these ribs dorsally, dorsally attached to the vertebral column. Vertebral column. Ventrally to the sternum through cartilage, cartilaginous tissue. That is. Hyaline cartilage. Generally, dorsally, dorsally, these ribs have two articulation surfaces, two attaching surfaces. Therefore, the ribs are called bicephalic ribs. So, dorsally, dorsally, these ribs have two articulation surfaces. Two articulation surfaces means what? Left. One surface, right side one surface. Therefore, those are called bicephalic surfaces. Okay, ribs dorsally, ribs dorsally contains two articulation surfaces, two attaching surfaces. Therefore, the ribs are called bicephalic. The the skull is called dicondylic skull because two occipital condyles present. Therefore, those are called Therefore, the skull is called dice condylic skull. Here, two articulation surfaces are there passing. Therefore, it is called bicephalic or dicephalic condition. Okay, that's it. Next, this is explanation about the first seven pairs of ribs. Next, eighth, ninth, tenth. Next, eighth, ninth, tenth. Eighth, ninth, and the tenth pairs of ribs are called false ribs.
This is seventh period. Divide like this. Way. Like this. Way. May may this is seventh pair of highly cordless is a differential to make the line perfect. To this eighth pair, ninth pair, tenth pair is attached. So directly it is not attached. Seventh highly cordless is differentiated here. And forms one more three chord pages. That's why these three eighth to ninth to tenth pairs of rings are called false rings, as it is not attached directly to the stem. It is attached to the seventh hyaline chord lace. It is attached to the part of the seventh hyaline chord lace. Therefore, eighth to ninth to tenth pairs of rings also called. Vertebro chondral ribs. Vertebro, vertebro, vertebro chondral, vertebro chondral ribs, vertebro chondral ribs. Why? One back side it is attached to the vertebra, but front side it is it is attached to the cartilage tissue. That's why vertebro chondral ribs. Okay, that is the explanation about the eighth, the ninth, the tenth. Next one, the last eleventh, twelfth, eleventh and twelfth pairs of eleventh and twelfth pairs of ribs are called floating ribs. Floating ribs. Floating ribs. Floating ribs. See. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. True ribs. Eight, nine, ten. False ribs. Eleven. Eleven. Are you visible? Eleven. This is eleven. Eleven and twelve. Floating ribs. They are not. They are not attached either to the sternum or anterior ribs. It is attached to. Only vertebral cord. It is freely, freely float. Ventrally, they are not either attached to the sternum or not anterior ribs. These two only attached to back side only. That's why these are called floating ribs. Floating ribs. Okay, that's it. See, rib, side ribs, side ribs. Sternum, vertebral column. Togetherly forms. Togetherly forms rib case. Rib case. Togetherly forms rib case. This is called completely. This is called rib case. This rib case protects lungs. Here lungs. A pair of lungs. A pair here like this. A pair of lungs. Lungs and heart is. Okay, so for the heart, to back side vertebral column, front side sternum, either sides rib case, rib case gives protection. Okay, this is the explanation about ribs. This is xiphoid process. Posterior, inferior part. If you keep here, here you can get this xiphoid process. Part we will sense. If you keep for your fingers, you will get a kind of a sensation that will be separated. Like this, it is separated. Like this, it is separated. Sephoid process. Okay. That's it. So this is the explanation about the ribs. With this, the skull, skull part, vertebral column, sternum, and ribs. These are all collectively called axial skin. On introductory class, we have discussed that the skeletal system is differentiated into two parts: axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton is finished. Now we will see appendicular skeleton. Appendicular skeleton. So here, see the bones of the limbs. The bones of the limbs. The bones of the 
limbs the bones of the limbs and girdle girdle buttocks region buttocks region front back left right these are all the bones of the limbs and girdle girdle pelvic girdle and pectoral girdle all collectively called appendicular skin it consists of 126 bones appendicular skeleton limbs limbs means hands legs pelvic girdle this is called pectoral girdle this is called pelvic girdle pectoral girdle this is called pectoral girdle this is this and this pectoral girdle pelvic girdle this is called pelvic girdle and the pelvic girdle okay hands legs shoulder and buttocks in these regions so whatever may be the bones are present those are all collectively called appendicular skeleton it consists of 126 bones the skeletal axial skeleton it consists of 80 bones all together 206 bones in an adult human being the skeletal system is made up of 206 bones okay so in the appendicular skeletal region totally how many bones are there 126 bones okay so first of all we will see bones bones of bones of four limb bones of four limb bones of four limb each limb each limb each hand is made up of 30 bones 30 bones 30 bones both the legs 30 bones okay each limb is made up of 30 bones each limb is made up of 30 bones 30 bones those are from from this region this is called shoulder region pectoral girdle from this region one bone is present one bone this is called humerus humerus one humerus this is radius radius and ulna one radius one ulna radius and ulna eight carpus eight carpus five metacarpus fourteen phalanges means this is this is phalanges phalanges this is 40 see this is humerus one humerus this is from here pelvic pectoral to pectoral girdle this part is pectoral girdle this part this part this part is pectoral girdle so from here to here one bone humerus here two bones radius and ulna radius and ulna here wrist bone carpus eight will be there here carpus carpus eight bones carpus metacarpus one here one two three four five these these are metacarpus phalanges this is in finger bones one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fourteen okay so fourteen plus five nineteen nineteen plus eight twenty seven twenty twenty eight Each limb is made up of thirty bones. In this one, thirty bones. In this one, thirty. Thirty. Each limb is made up of thirty bones. See this diagram I have drawn. Here. 
This is humerus. This is humerus. Okay. This is humerus. Next here. Humerus. Humerus. Radius. Alma. Radius. Alma. Here. Carpals. Eight carpals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carpals. Next. Five metal carpals. Five metacarpals. Five metacarpals. Okay. So here, this is. Okay, here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. These are called disease. This disease. Okay, phalanges. Totally 14 is there. Bones are four limbs. Explanation is disease. So this is color bone. That is the next exercise. Tomorrow. Again, I will draw disease and explain to you. Okay, that's all. Next, here. The bones of the king limb, the bones of the king limb are, the bones of the king limb are, see, you cannot see this, okay, so I will write it. The bones of the king limb means leg, the bones of the leg are, the longest thigh bone is femur, femur. Longest by bone, femur. Longest from buttocks, from here onwards, it starts down. The longest by bone. That is called femur. Next, one. Fibula and tibia. Tibia. Fibula and tibia. Here, how radius and all like that? Not easy. Okay, so. See, this is here, tibia and fibula, okay, tibia and tibia, next, tibia and tibia, next, tarsus, here I said carpus, like that, in our ankle, ankle bones, tarsus, eight bones, like this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But they tarsus are seven bones. In hand, in hand, eight are there, but in the ankle region, ankle, who we call tarsus are called ankle bones are. Metacarpals. this is 40. 14 plus 5, 19. 20, 27, 28, 29. Then 30 is sigma? Yes. One. One. Uh, couple, cup shaped structure called patella. One cup shaped structure called patella. Patella, which covers knee joint. Knee joint. Knee, knee, knee. Knee joint. Okay? So that is called knee cap. It covers patella. Patella. 
it calls knee joint. Therefore, it is called knee cap. Totally. So that diagram I will draw here. It is a hand. It is hand. Now I will draw. Now I will draw. Hindi. Leg. See, it is also longest. Longest bone. Longest. Longest bone. It is called longest bone. That is called femur. Femur. Longest bone. That is called femur. Next one is tibia and tibula. Tibia, tibula, tibia, tibia, tibia. Tarsus, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Tarsus. Metatarsus, one, two, three, four. Okay, metatarsus. Now here, again I have to stand one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Same like a finger, like a hand finger, but toes also. These are also called toes. How? Thumb finger two, even our leg thumb finger also two. So exactly here, how was that? Same like that before. Okay, so like this. Here. Here. Okay, nice. This is the fixing position. Him, him, him. So the knee joint, I said not patella. So the kneecap or knee joint, kneecap, it covers the knee joint. So the kneecap is formed in tendon. It is formed in tendon. Tendon means what? It is a strong fibrous tissue. It is a strong fibrous tissue, which helps to formation of the kneecap. Therefore, the kneecap also called sesamoid. Sesamoid bone. Sesamoid bone. Object to discussion. It comes for object to discussion. Sesamoid bone. Sesamoid bone. Okay. So that's knee joint, knee cap, which is formed in tendon. Tendon means what? It is a fibrous thread like long tissue. Okay. In that tendon, this knee cap is formed. Therefore, this knee cap is also called sesamoid, sesamoid. Sesamoid. So this is the explanation about the appendicular skeleton. Appendicular skeleton.